And this, everyone, is the Powerline Wireless Access Point from TP-Link. This is not only an access point and an extender, uh, it's gonna allow you to have Wi-Fi. It is going to extend using your existing home wiring. You heard that right. You don't have to run a cable, so if you're in an apartment, you can't drill, you can't tap, you can't do anything, you plug this in to standard outlets. It's claiming you get 1,000 megabits over your power line connection and 1,200 megabits over your AC Wi-Fi. Uh, plug and play, extra power socket on the consumer side here, and one touch Wi-Fi configuration. It's promoting 4K HD support. There's a model number down there. Um, there's a little bitty explanation of what it does, but the idea is you put the one unit next to your router, you put this other unit where your Wi-Fi is, you connect them up and that will, if your, wi your router's maybe down in a basement and you need your Wi-Fi upstairs, it's gonna make a backhaul connection over your existing power lines. It does promote gigabit speeds and it does have a gigabit connection. There's a little bit of the back of the box. Um, Home plug AV2 standards with a maximum of 300 meters over your existing wiring. So there's this nondescript unit, and you can plug them honestly in any order, but this nondescript small unit here, this is the one that goes with your Wi Fi router. So you could plug your router into this, you could plug your network from your router into that. There's a pairing button down below to connect it, and then this is the power connection with the ground. So this little octopus is the smallest route that I could think of to show the power connection. It's literally going to go down one and up the other. So that's the maximum distance it's going to have to travel to produce internet. So I'm trying to give it the best scenario. If anything, they can claim that maybe there's too much signal. So there's the unit. It has two little green lights. One says that it's powered. The other one that it has a network connection to the internet. You can see those two little green lights. Okay. So that's the one unit. The second unit is the Wi-Fi access point. It's going to have password information on here for the first time you set it up, a bunch of barcodes, and then it's going to have buttons for LEDs to turn those off, a pairing button to pair to the base unit, a Wi-Fi button to turn your Wi-Fi on and off, I'm guessing, and then it's going to have a second network connection for a wired device, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. It has actually made a link already. So the way you know that you're linked on this one is it'll have three lights, so it's got power connection which means the other unit is connected over the power and it's got a network connection which is the bottom light this one here is going to have those lights as well so it's going to say power it's going to have a home connection it's missing its powered pair and then it looks like it's got wi-fi signal so we're going to go ahead and take and plug this into my computer and we're going to see how fast it is compared to my regular wired connection so I am online, my Wi-Fi is turned off, I'm doing pretty good. I have symmetrical gigabits, so I have one gig up, one gig down. I usually get between 850 and 900 through all my routing. So now it's running packets and it's getting, in an ideal scenario, 264 megabits. So it's saying that 264 megabits was the maximum that this saw. What was interesting about this is it claimed gigabit. I'm literally going to take this connection, right? I technically have a two and a half gig connection here. I'm going to unplug it from that unit and I'm going to plug directly in to this unit. Now I don't think that my bench is on my two and a half gig LAN, but I should be able to at least get eight or 900. Now I'm going to go back to this. I'm going to run the exact same test. Now I might've lost connection on the other one. We'll see. Um, we're going to do it. Nope. It's connected still. Yeah. 2.35 gigabit. So this network adapter is good for uh, 10 times the performance. So these guys on my bench here said that they could perform ideally at up to one gigabit speed over a connection that's literally inches. They literally go down one up the other. The shortest connection I could possibly make. That's just telling you they're not quite the gigabit rated speed. Now there's other advantages to having something like this. It is a Wi-Fi access point, which can be kind of cool. So now I've plugged it back in uh, the regular old method. I'm gonna see if we're still connected, which we are. So again, 249 under ideal conditions. Now TP-Link Tether, this one here, is how you manage this whole unit. There's my device. 
Now you can configure all of the settings through the TP-Link Tether app. So it's going to log into the device. It's saying it doesn't have internet right now, which is a lie. I've noticed it takes it a little while to do that. It's showing that I have one client on the 5G and one client on the wired. You do get all of the really cool client management that you can do in here. Um, so you can go in here and you can block users, you can do stuff. Uh, if you want, there's your 5G. And now I'm going to get on Wi-Fi here, 250 megabits per second. That's not bad at all uh, for this device. And that's the upload speed, or sorry, the download speed. And then it's going to switch over and do the upload speed, which should be really close to the same. So about a quarter gig is what I'm getting over the Wi-Fi. And guess what? That was the same that I got when I was running over the power line as well, right? So. Uh, on the 5G side, it's going to be able to do that. If I go back over here, I can connect to the uh, 2.4. So it has 2.4 and 5G. Now you can go rename these to be your actual network name. So you can extend your current network with these. Now if I do that same exact test on the 2.4 gigahertz band, not the 5 gigahertz, you can see significant drop. So uh, about a quarter of the speed, so you're getting 60. Now that's not the power line, that's just the network conditions so it's getting about 60 megabit on 2.4 so 5g is faster that's the uh, answer that we get here now how does that compare with a wi-fi 6 so this arc wi-fi is my wi-fi 6 access point i'm going to go ahead and close out of this this is also a tp-link mesh system this is the x20 this is a super old tp-link system but man does it perform well so i'm going to go ahead and hit go we're going to see if we can beat 200 and there we go. So over 700, are we going to break 700? So we're getting 700 megabit over a traditional uh, wired mesh system. And it's going to get really close to that on upload. And I'm streaming my show. Uh, I've got a ton of EMF going on in here as well. So you can see that a traditional Wi-Fi 6 access point will blow these things away. So do they have a place in this world? Absolutely. If you're in an apartment, you don't want to run messy cables. You're on the same electrical circuit, let's hope. So it's just connecting uh, in a very short run. Looks like you can get a 200 megabit connection pretty reliably through them. The Wi-Fi is decent on the 5G. The 2.4 is limited, as you see. Um, now, you can add more of these devices, too. You can get more individual units to extend them and expand them. But if you're going to do that, I'd re recommend running a wired backhaul or run a mesh system, and you're good to go.